everyone, it's James, and today we are back with the third and final installment in our RV sound deadening video series. But the first two parts of that series are all the way back last summer, so we're going to do a recap in case you've forgotten because even I sort of had. So, in the very first video, I kind of investigated in a kind of scholarly manner the different kinds of soundproofing materials available, why they work, what makes them work, etc. And I identified three that we were going to use to soundproof in a kind of traditional automotive way our RV. In part two, we actually went out and did a before test and then I spent like an entire long weekend putting in the materials and then we did an after test and I was able to, here, here we go, it's 70.1 decibels before at 70 miles an hour and after 69.7 decibels. So we got an improvement of a whopping 0.4 decibels, which was, well, disappointing to say the least. So then I tried to figure out why. What had I done wrong? Were the materials bad? No, they weren't bad because we'd done a proof of concept. The materials worked. And what I eventually figured out is that I wasn't quite measuring the right thing and that we were getting a lot of noise coming from above and behind where I hadn't done any soundproofing treatment at all. So then we kind of did a little playing around with our thermal curtain. We blocked off the sound from behind. We blocked off the sound from above. And what we got from that suggested that we got like a one point or three times as much, a 1.3 decibel improvement just in blocking off the sound from up above, like in the forehead area of our RV or the cab over area. And so, okay, hmm, might be worth it to do something about that. Well, the folks from Second Skin Audio saw that video and we had a dialogue and even though the results like were completely underwhelming, they liked what I had done. They thought I explained it well, et cetera, et cetera. And so they wanted to sponsor actually doing something about the forehead. So they've sent me a bunch of stuff to cover the forehead. And I kind of think it doesn't matter that they've sent me this stuff. Like it's not going to sway me any because we're going to go out and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take before and after measurements. So we are going to have readings, like decibel readings, before and after. And if it works, great. If not, oh well. Um, so let's take a look at what they've sent. So the first thing they sent, this is actually just left over from the last time. Um, but then they sent another box of stuff. Damplifier. So the idea is that we will, it's a constrained layer damping material. And the idea is we're going to stick it on the inside skin of the forehead, kind of everywhere where we can get to that fiberglass to help reduce the vibrations coming in because it gets buffeted about by wind a whole lot. That's step one. Step two is they sent a whole lot of this Megazorb material. This is that melamine foam and it has sound absorbing properties. It also has a pretty good R value. So they didn't send any of the, uh, the luxury liner, the mass loaded vinyl, because we decided that wasn't going to work too well in the, the cab over area. But they did send this and they sent a bunch of it in one inch thicknesses. This is something I had left over from last time in a half inch thickness that had the uh, self-adhesive backing. They sent it in one inch. Now in some places up there I have more than one inch of space and so you can stack this stuff. You can put layer on layer on layer. And even if this does nothing for the sound, I'll be happy to have the thermal insulation up there because that area gets pretty hot in the summer. It's dark colored, it's sealed up in there. The thermal insulation has value in and of itself. But now this stuff, this one inch stuff, does not have the adhesive backing, so then they also sent super strong contact adhesive. Um, I suppose I could have used 3M7788, whatever, um, but this stuff is actually meant for the melamine foam, so that's what we're gonna use. So in some places it'll be one layer, some places two, maybe even some places three layers, I don't know. So that's what we're gonna put up in the RV. Now, we're gonna go take some measurements, but these measurements will not be directly comparable to the ones we did before, like this 70.1, 69.7. Won't be able to kind of relate those directly. Why? Well, last time it was summer and it was 100 degrees outside. Now it is winter and it is 45 degrees outside. That's one reason. Another reason, I've got a different phone. So it's gonna be a different measuring device actually measuring the sound levels in the RV, but we'll try to get it as close as we could. 
And then there have been other changes to the RV. I have a new mattress in the back. I put a new Starlink flat high performance dish on the roof. So that could create some different turbulence and wind noise. A lot of things could be different. So use caution in any of these readings and comparing them to those before and after readings from, uh, from way back when. But we're gonna try to do as best we can. I've inflated the tires. We're gonna use the same stretch of road. Just all due caution, they're not exactly the same. And so with that, I guess there's nothing left to do but uh, load up in the van and hit the highway. So let's go. Okay, so we got the results from the before test and it came back at 73 decibels, which is louder than our before run from the last time we did this last summer and certainly louder than anything we've gotten since. So I don't really have an explanation for that other than winter and, you know, maybe the loads in the RV or that thing on the roof are, are different. Or it's that we live in St. George and another 83,000 people have moved here since last summer. Anyway. We're gonna go ahead. So this is what I have to do. Basically, from here to here, I gotta remove, right? So this, these screw down and they'll come down pretty easily. This I built that's just screwed together, I can remove that. There are some metal boxes in each side of this here. Those will have to come out so I can get to the wall behind them. And the couple areas I'm really worried about, I think you can see it really good right here. If you come over here, there is a, there, there may be a screw. See that right there? That's, that would be a screw cover that I have no idea how I'm going to get. I hope there's no screw in it. Um, maybe I'll just get lucky and they didn't put those screws in. And then there's another one back even further, right? No idea how I'm going to get those out without dropping the cabinets and it's on both sides. So that's my biggest worry for that. Um, I may wind up like drilling a hole in there. So I have an access hole and then removing the screw through the access hole. That may be what I want to do. I don't know. For right now, I'm just hoping there's no screws. Um, I'll have to remove these metal boxes that should expose the inside of the fiberglass cap. I'll then have to clean it off really well because there's a bunch of fiberglass bat insulation that they kind of glued up in there. I'll have to get rid of all that. So my stuff will stick better. And then I start putting things back in. So. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, removing, losing these plastic clips, wherever they are, they'll fly all over the RV. So yeah, that's what's next. All right. Ha ha, yeah. Out she comes. Okay, on this side, a little bit different approach. This one back here is not screwed in, but this one is, but it's okay. Cause I can kinda, you see, kinda get to it here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that out. And then what I'll probably find is the screw is kind of at an angle or something that allowed them to drive it from, from here and I'll remove it. And then this should remove, I'll have to undo this stuff, but it should come off the same way the other one did. Ha <laughs> ha Two. So I, my thing came right out, oddly enough, it just like, whoop, just lifted right out. Anyway, I, I'm getting this space cleared off and, and I really do think there's an opportunity. Like if I put this board across here at the very edge, you know, because it's all carved out. So like, you know, to make it easy to get up and down. But if I put this board here, I am not in any danger of hitting that. And if I sit down, I'm not in danger of hitting it. And if I did, I'd hit it once or twice and then I would learn and then my behavior would be changed. That is an awful lot of space. There's also a lot of wire. So I'm gonna see if I can't remove some of this wire that I, that I just don't need. Um, and then this insulation has to come out and super unfortunately, you can see that it is glued. And for me to get a good bonding with my uh, sound reduction materials, I'm going to have to remove most of this. So the rest of this afternoon is going to be me wearing a oof, dust mask and removing fiberglass 
particles from from there so that there's probably not gonna be much more video today but see this think of this because i may put it back completely different from how it came down there would be a lot of stuff a lot of screws i could save by just making one big open space here i'm kind of digging the idea anyway that's it onward so yesterday didn't get a whole lot more fun. After that, it was mostly just me removing that insulation and adhesive. And so I came to three conclusions. The first is removing that adhesive and insulation is very difficult. I tried to do it kinetically, like with, with a wire brush and scrapers and stuff. It didn't work all that well, made a mess, got stuff in the air. So then I had to resort to chemical warfare. So I had to, I had to put on my respirator and I was using chemicals that Let's just say you cannot buy in all 50 states. But I got it done. Um, once I had that done, I came to conclusion number two, and that's that the space up there is too big for me to just put it back like it was. I can get a lot more space up there by doing something different. So I'm going to. Probably not in this video. It'll be a different video. Then that led to conclusion number three. I have just ruined my experiment by not putting it back in the same way if we get results, then we won't know if they're because I built a different kind of cabinet or if it's because the soundproofing materials worked. So what I'm gonna do for the experiment now is something that nobody in their right mind would ever do. So since we wanna be able to determine if the sound reduction materials work, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go for another test drive just like this. I expect this to sound atrocious. It's gonna be bad. Then I'm going to apply the two kinds of sound reducing materials that we have. And then we're gonna go for another test drive without even finishing the space off with just the soundproofing material in here. And then that's what we'll use to gauge how effective the materials are. Because otherwise, if I build something, you won't know, you know, if we're storing throw pillows up here and that's what's actually absorbing the sound or whatever. So that's the plan for today, which unfortunately means more test driving. This is going to be super loud sounding is my, Theory, but I guess we'll see. So let's head out on the road. Okay, so first of all, I hope y'all appreciate this because this winds up being like a 30 mile round trip to get to this same stretch of road. But just before we start taking measurements, qualitatively, it sounds like there's an open window up there is really what it sounds like. Okay, with the pretest out of the way, we're gonna start installing stuff. And we're gonna start off with Damplifier. Now, the way I install this is no different from the way anyone else you might see on YouTube or whatever is doing this, but we'll run through it once just in case. So even though I spent most of the day yesterday cleaning up up there, never hurts to give it a final wipe down with uh, some denatured alcohol. So we'll start off with that. I'm gonna put this piece kind of right here. Then, kind of get this into position. It's gonna go kind of like that. Now this whole thing curves, so there will be little pie wedge shaped pieces as we go around because of the curve, but more or less in position, that'll go about there, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is start peeling this back a little bit. get it into position and then peel it off as I move up the piece of material because otherwise it might start sticking, you know, right away. I don't necessarily want that. Like that. Then come back after it. That's a pretty big thing. So I'm going to come back after it with a roller. to make sure you've got good adhesion and you've worked out any air bubbles. And from there on, it's a big day of lather, rinse, repeat as I've got to do this whole thing. And then, you know, I'll have to wind up, start cutting pieces to fit the gaps, but you get the idea. That's how it goes on. The goal is to get coverage over more than 60%. I don't think I'll have any trouble doing that, but it's going to be very repetitive. So we'll just come back when we're all done. A few hours later, we have this it's uh it's close to 100 percent. it's not quite obviously but uh 
I got it all the way down in the front there. I even had enough left over that I put some on what would be the former roof of the of the transit. So it's it's down on this surface as well. Anything that's not vibrating is going to help with the noise. Now, for the second and more difficult part is putting up the uh, Megazorb, the melamine foam. So I think this first piece, I'm just going to try to make it easy on myself just to get a, a feel for the process and just put it up. And I only have to cut a little bit off the top there for it to fit in underneath these. These are marker lights on the outside. And my goal is to get two pieces of it here because I looked it up. This stuff has an R value of like four point something per inch, like 4.1, 4.2 per inch. And so if I can get two layers in there, that's like an R value of eight, which may even be better than the walls, which would be just a huge win, even if it did nothing for the sound. So goal is to get two pieces in, but we certainly want at least one everywhere. And I'm gonna need to cut that a little. Here goes, I'm not too excited about spraying this stuff in here, by the way, but here goes nothing. That ought to be good enough. Now let's get the other piece. The reality of this is, is that once this stuff is up, there will be some sort of cabinet or something holding it in place. So even if this adhesive doesn't come out perfect, I'm sure it'll be fine. Hmm. Okay. So it turns out the spray adhesive has a pretty short tack time, like the amount of time where it stays sticky and you can work it. So by the time I got in here, this had largely dried up and wasn't very sticky. In fact, well, only down there is it still wet enough to stick. So I have this double-sided tape that I got when I did the last sound proofing or sound reduction project under the seats that I didn't use much of because my product held itself in place. So, and plus, since I'd like to have a few brain cells left at the end of the day, I think I'm gonna try using this double-sided tape to hold it up and we'll see if that does any better. So, here we go. All right, one thing I did learn from when I was using this stuff before is it's best to put the tape on the curved surface and then form the, the product around it. So that's what I've done here. Here's hoping this tape works because that seems a much more sane way to go about this. All right. Up, up, up. Maybe between the tape and then I'll spray the back of the foam outside and that'll be enough to hold it up. So. All right, that's how we're going to go forward. So a lot more of that kind of thing. And then uh, hopefully I can get two layers up here. All right, cool. Okay, it's been a long afternoon of playing with foam. I was covered with adhesive. It's a project. And this is sort of where we're at. So I've got one layer of this foam up, the Megazorb Sound Absorbing Foam. I wanted to put up two, but then it really started to take away the space I would have for storage. So... This is as far as I'm going to go for right now. Um, I've also got some foam that I put down here, sort of on top of the on top of the roof of what was the transit body or cab. I've got some foam there. The rest of this I'm not going to finish up today. That's going to be kind of a bigger deal of me figuring out what I want to do and how I want to trim this off and finish it off. I am going to put a little bit more of that uh, that foam up in here, but that's got to wait until I've got a trim or some piece to hold it in place. So. For right now, this is as far as we're going to go. The only thing that's left to do is uh, take it out and hit the road and see if we get uh, better results than we got this morning. Off we go. So we're headed out to the same stretch of road. It's getting, sun's going down. But uh, qualitatively, 
I'll say that with that up there, it doesn't sound as much like an open window. I don't get that noise that I was getting from up there before. It seems like the overall pitch of the noise is, is somewhat lower. Now, I don't know whether or not overall it's going to be any quieter or not. It, it feels quieter, but I don't know if that's what's actually going to happen or not. So we'll see when we get to our, uh, our test mile. It's coming up in a little bit. Okay, and so this is what it looks like when it's all finally completed, but this is more of a construction project. That's another video. It'll be the next video coming up, is this thing. Anyway, let's talk results. So way back in the beginning, before I took anything apart, we, we got a reading of 73.0 decibels. And that was louder than what it was last summer, but there were a bunch of reasons why that might not be comparable. Then tearing out everything and just having a hollow fiberglass shell up here, we got a reading of 73.3 decibels. Now, it didn't sound like it only got 0.3 decibels louder. It sounded like there was an open window up here. And that shows part of the, uh, the limitations of doing these kinds of experiments on my own. The, the, it was a different day, so the weather was different. The wind was coming from a different direction. There are a whole bunch of differences. And trust me, it sounded louder with just the fiberglass shell up here, but more than just 0 0.3 decibels. Anyway, that was the before. Empty fiberglass shell, 73.3. Then we added our two different types of insulation, and we went out for another ride, and we were able to get a reading of 69.5 decibels 69.4 that's a difference of 3.8 decibels and that is kind of significant and those two readings they were just taken like eight hours apart that's all it took me to put that stuff in so again that shows that you'll get better results if you can take your readings close in time to each other and you know under the same conditions and it was the same day it was just eight hours later we got that so a reduction of 3.8 decibels from adding the stuff just to the uh to the empty shell now ideally I would have done this in a wind tunnel or something like that so that I could be guaranteed of the same wind, the same temperature, the same wind speed and direction, all that sort of thing. But that's not how it worked out. So that's sort of uh, the results for now. And I'm calling this a success because anecdotally or qualitatively, I guess, it sounds way quieter up there. Even just like when you're not driving, when you're just like listening to where it a park and there's snow plowing at the park even just that up here is quieter and this it's it's just a very nice feeling up there and the thermal insulation properties it's like well you can see it's 22 degrees outside and it is not anything approaching cold anywhere up there so thermal insulation good acoustic insulation also good we're calling it a success that's it for now it's james at rv see you later